How's everybody doing? It is Marlon Gibbons here. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, today, as you saw by the thumbnail, the title, I want to talk about sub, subwoofers. I'll start by saying, I don't think you need them. That's, that's just my opinion. I think there, there are thousands and thousands of incredibly mixed tracks that come out every day and subs were not used to create those mixes. It is one of those things, I don't believe it's a necessity, but I think it's a really, really helpful tool. And today I wanna to talk about some of the advantages of, of having a sub when you're doing your mixes. Okay, so let me just kind of frame in generally what I'm trying to convey here, or the, the, the basis, oh, sorry, uh, the basis of what I'm trying to say, in that we're looking at the lower end of the spectrum here, and it's that area that I'm suggesting a sub can help you. And if you just have, say, a, a four, four and a half, even five inch set of monitors, often you can't hear what's going on in those lower ranges and therefore can't address it because it's not an issue if you can't see it or hear it. I mean, it is an issue, but you just can't hear it until, you know, how many have done that car test where you do a mix in your, in your studio, you take it into your car and it's just all bass but you didn't hear that in your studio because well, it didn't show. So the area I'm talking about, let's start at 20 hertz. 20 hertz to say 50, 55, maybe even 60. That's, that's kind of the sub range that I'm talking about. That's where a sub would come in because it's going to help you um, hear what's there. And it's not to make the music sound good, it's to reveal what's going on in that area so you can address it and tone it down or, or kick it up depending on the style, the genre uh, and all those things. But that's your mix approach. You need to hear what's going on first. And then we might take anything from I don't, 60 hertz to uh, 200, 250, maybe even three for generally your bass area. And then you get into your low mids and so forth. But we're keeping in the low end. There are a lot of visual aids on the market basically just a visual representation of what's happening activity wise across the frequency spectrum of your track. So you can see buildups or deficiencies in certain areas. And, and those kind of tools are great. So long as you're using your ears as well, it can be incredibly helpful to actually hear, not just see what's going on in that, as I said, 20 to 50 or 20 to 60 range. So when you do get in your car and do the car test, it's, um, a kick, for example, it's a nice, punchy, tight, full of energy kick, not this big, washed out, boomy, muddy kick. So that would be reason number one to have a sub is to be able to hear what's going on in those low ranges that your monitors can't necessarily reproduce. And another reason for you to consider having a sub in your system is less of a technical reason and more about inspiration, motivation. Um, and I can break this into kind of two different areas. One is that I've always suggested that if you're gonna write a track is to build your sound palette first. Uh, there's a bunch of advantages to that. It's not just simply about efficiency and being prepared. Um, once you, you kind of get into that creative flow, it's so much better if you can just quickly cycle through these different um, you know, tonal palettes and, and different sounds. Maybe there's synth leads and, and, and synth basses and, um, different drum kits or whatever it is because we all work in different genres but um, it's so much easier if you can keep that creative energy hyped and not have to lose it because you're waiting for an instrument to load where I'm going with this is that once you build that palette as you're cycling through these these let's say low-end type um, tones whether it's a kick or, or a synth bass or whatever having a sub can really excite and drive up that energy when you're auditioning a lot of these these sounds it just heightens the energy and um, engages you even that much more into these tones and gets you that much more into the creative spirit and um, I keep saying energy but I think you get what I mean is that is that it can hype and provide more creativity and um, excitement about the track you're making when you hear much more coming out of the sounds that you're considering using and the other facet of that would be sound design you know let's say whether you're you're creating your own you know booms or rises or hits or, or anything using utilizing that that 
lower, lower range, um, you know, lets you dial in, but helps you feel the energy of, of creating those, those tones, which just, again, I believe brings you more into, into the track, gets you more hyped about what you're creating. And probably the most obvious reason to have a sub is perspective. It gives you another perspective to hear what you're mixing. And a lot of us do this by doing the car test or, or listening on earbuds or crappy little speakers or um, you have different size monitors. In, in my case, I have the Atom T5Vs, which are five inch uh, monitors. And as well as, as well, I have the Focal Shape 65s. Um, which are a little bigger, have a little bit more of a range. And I'm actually using the Atom T10S 10-inch um, subwoofer with my Atom T5Vs. And what's great about that is I actually have a foot switch that I can engage or disengage. I can engage or disengage um, the sub if I want. So as I'm listening to a track, I can click in the sub or take it out. Just again, more variation to hear what's actually happening on your track, because that's that's ultimately what we want. We want things to sound as true on the speakers as really is in the session, because once you bounce that out and listen to it on any number of different systems, uh, depending on their ability to reproduce the frequencies that are actually in that track, it could sound very different. So as many tools as you have to actually give you um, a true realistic, representation of what's going on in that session, the better. Just accuracy and cross compliance. So it just lets you get closer to that that marker of what makes a great mix is that that it sounds great on your phone or on a, a hi-fi system or in your, your studio as well as in your car and on all kinds of different devices, right? So do you need a sub for your system, for your studio? No, you don't. Do you need 15 guitars? Okay, forget that second part, but you don't need a sub. Um, however, I think it's a, a really handy tool to have. It, it informs you of, of things going on and mixes that you might not otherwise hear, um, but as well, it, it can be a kind of an inspirational thing too. And especially when you're kind of done your, your mix and you wanna sit back and listen to that master, not in a critical listening way, but just in a, I'm done kind of way and you you hit play and you crank the volume and you have that sub on and, and you can just feel the energy of that track. Just part of heightening that whole experience. So I think it can be a great tool for some. Uh, we're all in different situations. So if you live in maybe an apartment, it's it's not an option. But I wanted to at least put out there that it's it can be a little bit more than simply a technical analytical tool. It can be a source of inspiration as well. As always, I appreciate you, my friends. Stay well, and we will catch you next week. Cheers.